Silas and what that do, I met with Muhammad. And it's just great to be a part of what God is doing. And uh, Hannah, one of our own, has been able to go over there for her second visit. Skyla has been there. When Hannah went the first time, I told her, I said, I feel the first fruits out of Rogers Baptist Church of young adults. I'd like to see go over there. And it's just a great investment for your life. It, it, it'll change you. And so it's almost got to be an annual thing for Brother Muhammad to come. And we're glad that he likes being here and we're happy to be a part of his ministry. God bless you, brother. You come. Let's welcome you. third of 
of the world. Only 20% go to two-thirds of the world, which is the 1040 window between Morocco and China. So Rogers Baptist Church is a leader in going <coughs> to that part of the world. I'm very sure of that. And I pray that this will continue. Because today in the Middle East, it's open doors. God is doing a great work there. And if we can't see that, there is something wrong with us. Today in the Middle East, five civil wars are going at the same time. There is not a region in the world where there are five civil wars going at the same time. There's a civil war in Libya, there's a civil war in Yemen, there's a civil war in Syria, there's a civil war in Iraq, there's a civil war in Afghanistan. There is unrest all over. Egypt, Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Iran. God is on the move there. Amen. He's doing something. And we can't just sit idle. We need to be on the move. We need to see that and get going. And because that's what God wants to do. And I'm, I'm thankful for this church. I really feel at home. Because it's a mission-minded church. And, uh, and the success of this church comes from it going out. <coughs> from those pictures you see on the wall outside. That's what makes it a good church. It goes out. And we need more of that. Because that's why we're here. That's why God placed us here. We're doing great. I bring you greetings from Lebanon, from our church, from Pastor Isa, uh, from the believers there. Uh, God has been doing great things in our lives. We are in the process of building an orphanage and a shelter home. Uh, we are also in the process of building a camp for uh, children, a uh, recreational camp, where uh, we can reach them with the gospel. Uh, I'm heavily involved in ministering to children, and God has opened the door for us to partner with Canacock camps, and they're coming to Lebanon to build a camp for us there, and so we can host refugee children into it. Uh, also, uh, we are partnering with another organization uh, that is concerned about orphans. And we have two programs, Orphan Prevention and Orphan Care. And as you know, the crisis in Syria has resulted in a lot of orphans. Many, many people dying, leaving behind them a lot of children. And so before anything happens there, we are trying to prepare the way to be able to minister to these children. So pray for these. Uh, it's a great time in the Middle East. Uh, I cannot express with words what God is doing there. And I feel it's the hand of the Lord that is moving there. And uh, more Muslims are coming to Christ at this time than any other time. And more Muslims are coming to churches and seeking the truth more than any other time. Uh, they are suffering. The brothers are killing each other. But we need to be there uh, as a place of refuge, as a place where they can find hope because they're losing hope. And this is all God's doing. I remember five years ago, it wouldn't have dawned on anybody's mind what God was going to do in the Middle East. One man burnt himself and made up for everywhere. His pictures went viral and there were revolutions everywhere. And then the rise of ISIS brought more calamity, more sorrow, more suffering. Do you know what? That's all God's doing. Make no mistake about this. Because when you are interested about your earthly status, God is interested about your heavenly status. And you know what? He will plunder everything. He will destroy everything to bring you to it. Make no mistake about this. God will do it. And we need to realize that. I would like to show you a video that gives you an idea of what's happening in the Middle East today.
just see those children where five years ago you couldn't gather five children together to tell them about Jesus and today they're by the hundreds coming into our churches to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's see this video. And he died for all 
that they which live henceforth should not live unto themselves, but unto him who died and rose again. Amen. The reason you are living is not to be a professor or a lawyer or a businessman or an engineer or a doctor. The reason you are here is to shine for Jesus, is to make a difference, is to be the salt of this earth. When you are not the soul, you are of no value before God. You need to be the soul in every way that God opens for you, in the capacity that He puts you in. That's the mindset. The mindset is always, how can I make a difference? When God plants a church in a place, He wants it to make a difference. Yes, in the community that it, it is in. Churches are not social clubs right. where you come to have a good time. Churches are lighthouses. They shine for Jesus wherever they are. That's the idea. And when we lose sight of this, we've lost it. There is no value for us to meet again. We are here to shine, to make a difference. The melody of different of indifference towards four things. In Isaiah 37, it says, uh, verse 29 says, Because you have raged against me, and your complacency has come to my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will turn you back on the way you came. God hates complacency. And that is the problem that the church has today. And it has been having for, a, for years towards the Muslim world. And I can understand why. They're Islamophobic. Yeah. It's scary. Those people care. Yeah. That's how we think. And that is true if God is not there. So how can God is there? So it doesn't make any difference what these people do. Because we trust God and we know everything is in his hands. Right. Yeah. He runs the world. Make no mistake about this. See the polls in the last election were always saying, it's Helen. He's going to make it. She's going to get it. Well, God had a different idea. Yeah. He changed them. Why? Because he runs the world. Yeah. Nobody tells him what to do. He raises a man and puts him down. Yeah. Nothing happens without him. That's true. And we need to be sure of this and accept it. Yeah. Take it deep inside and realize that God is sovereign in the affairs of men. Yeah. Nobody messes around with God. Yeah. Well. That's what we have to understand so we can be making a difference so we can stop being indifferent because when we are indifferent God has to deal with us because he came into this world to make a difference Amen. history was never the same after Jesus came to this world everything changed and I pray as God leaves you in this world you will make a difference you will not live for your own you will not be self-indulgent and selfish. But you will seek to change lives, impact them. It brings me great joy when I go around and share, leave my family for two months on the road to share with people, to raise laborers and to raise funds and to rally churches, to get engaged. It's a long time. But you know what? My wife and I are very happy to do it. In fact, she says, go. Yeah, go. I don't know if she says go because she wants to get rid of me. She says go because we need to feed these people. We need to take care of them. Why? Because we want to impact their lives. We want to make a difference in the lives of refugee children. Look at the city. Yeah. Never this happened in the history of Islam. Where hundreds of children singing to Jesus in a church. This is crazy. <coughs> because it's God's work. Right. He's doing it. Yeah. We're not doing it. Yeah. And you need to be part of it. 
the malady of indifference towards first sin. When we are indifferent towards sin, we get the time. Right. We need to have a clear stand on sin. 1 Peter 1, 15-16 As he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversion. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. So we cannot be indifferent towards sin. I don't understand what's happening in this country sometimes. I mean, it is legal to abort. It is legal to gay marriage. It is legal to transgender bathroom. It is legal to take drugs. It's illegal to pray in public schools. Man, what's happening to you? Right. You're losing it. I mean, these guys have the right to do all their dirt, and you have no right to live holy. This is crazy. It makes no sense. Why? Because the church has been indifferent. Amen. Compromising. Naive. Politically correct. Yeah. On the expense of its Lord and Master. On the expense of living in its comfort zone. Nobody wants to rock the boat. I remember when I went down to Tyre, all the evangelical leaders in Lebanon said, what are you going down to do? This is a Muslim area. This is a Muslim city. What? You want to make trouble? You want to rock the boat? And I said, by God's grace, I'm going to rock the boat and sink it. Amen. <laughs> because a boat that does not stand for Jesus should sink. Amen. <laughs> We have to take a stand. We have to stand for what is right. Do the right thing. I love it. In the last elections, when the churches rallied their people to go to the polls. Because they're going to make a difference in the Supreme Court and every place where it is godliness that is important. And every time we need to rally our people to stand for what is right, even if we're going to be persecuted. They tell me in America there is no persecution. Well, in America there is no persecution because you don't want to be persecuted. Not because there is no persecution. All those who live righteously shall be persecuted. That's true. That's true. That's true. That we avoid it all the time. We don't want to do it. We want to live at ease. You can't go fight the devil and expect him to give you a kiss. He's not stupid. He's smart. He's going to fight. We need to be different and stop being indifferent towards sin, the sin. Second, we should stop being indifferent towards the Savior. Amen. We're very indifferent towards the Savior. There's not a personal relationship. I believe in Jesus. Really? Do you have a personal relationship with Christ on a daily basis? Does He deal with you? Does He prune you? Does He take care of you? When you come to church, do you get convicted? Yeah. This morning as I was preaching, tears were shed, people were weeping, and I stood and I said, this is what church is all about. It's when people they weep over their nakedness, they weep over their poverty, they weep over their weakness, and they seek God's grace to help them. Amen. To renew them. That's what church is all about. Amen. We're not seeing people weeping anymore in our churches. Hearts touched. Because we are indifferent towards the Savior. We don't want Him to touch our lives. Oh, we love Jesus. Everybody says, I love Jesus. Jesus told you to go to the Middle East, you'd have a heart attack. <laughs> and I see that. <clears throat> Mighty to sing, our God is an awesome God, okay. And they're in the spirit, and they're happy, and they're shouting, and they're uh, praising the Lord. And then, when 
the meeting finished, I say, hey, buddy, are you ready to go back with me to the Middle East? Oh, well, I have to see the Lord. <laughs> What's happening? We're indifferent towards the Savior. That's what's happening. We are not letting Him work <coughs> in our lives, change us, prune us, take care of us. There is no intimacy anymore. He's just a regular person for us. And we need to be stopping being indifferent towards the Savior. We need to be stopping being indifferent towards our salvation. How can you neglect? Such a great salvation. I mean, the best thing that ever happened to you is not your wife, nor your husband. It's Jesus saving you. That's the most awesome thing that could ever happen to you. Is Christ saving you, snatching you from hell, taking you to eternity, to live with Him forever. My daughters come to me sometimes. They're 24, 23 years old. And I tell them, don't get mad. If Mr. Wright doesn't come along, forget it. Be single and serve the Lord. That's much better. Why? Because it's all about Jesus. It's not about the man or the woman. It's about Jesus. That's what's important. It's about that salvation, that great salvation that He has offered us, and we are so indifferent towards it. We treat it lightly. We cannot understand the value and the awesomeness of that work that took place in our lives. It makes no sense to us anymore. We take it for granted. I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. That's sad that we don't value our salvation. We don't lift it up. This costed Christ his blood. He shed his blood that you might be saved. That you might be sitting here tonight. That you might know him. That you might feel peace and joy. He did that for you. Do not be indifferent towards your salvation. Value it. Just like the Samaritan woman, you know? She went around. She was so happy, so excited, telling everybody what Jesus did to her. Just like the leper, Jesus told him, be quiet. He couldn't be quiet. He went out, talking and shouting. Why? Because he valued what the Lord did to him. It was something awesome. It's sad today. Many are indifferent towards their salvation. We need to be stopped being indifferent towards the saints. Jesus said, love one another. By this the world will know that you are my We are lacking love among each other. We are so much about division. All the time we want to be by. Over stupid issues. And Christ in John chapter 17 says, be one. As I and the Father are one. He always encouraged unity. He always encouraged love. He always encouraged getting together. And we are indifferent towards that. We come here and it's on Sunday morning we see each other and we say bye. See you next week. We are indifferent. There is no relationship. There is no love. There is no communion. How are you, brother? How can I pray for you? Can I visit you? Can I take you out to lunch? Can we go to dinner? We're indifferent. Why? Because we're so busy with the affairs of this world. That's our big problem. To love each other, to love the Lord, to love the lost. We have no time. We're busy. Paying bills and bills and bills. And we're just like, oh, we're hanging on no time. We are indifferent. I pray that the Lord will help us to stop being indifferent towards sin, towards the Savior.
towards our salvation and towards the saints. Because this will change everything. Yeah. When we are with them towards these four, everything will change. Second, the magnitude of difference. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may be discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We need to be different towards self. This is number one. We need to seek after righteousness. We cannot be indifferent towards ourselves. We need to deal with our issues, not hide them, not put them under the table, not ignore them not neglect When something arises, we need to deal with it. And not be different, but be different towards it. Because your health, your spiritual health, is extremely important to God. You have to be healthy spiritually, so you can be able to minister to other people. If you're spiritually not doing well, you are of no use for God. And so, you need to be different towards yourself. Look, examine yourself every day. What's happening with you? Secondly, the magnitude of difference towards the Savior. We need to look at Him in a different way. In a way where He can impact our lives. Lord, what do you want me to do? You see, Paul the Apostle, that great Pharisee who had learned the scripture, knew everything, smart, intelligent. When the Lord saved him, just like a little baby, he says, Lord, what would thou have me do? What do you want me to do? How many of you ask God, what should you do? It's just natural for us to do what we want to do. We never sit down and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? I want to be a doctor. Who said God wants you to be a doctor? Did you ask him? I want to be a lawyer. Who said? I mean, I said I wanted to be a businessman. I went into business. God did not want me in business. Uh, he took the two by four out, gave me a whacking, <laughs> lost everything, went to prison, until I understood that he doesn't want me in business. And I was trying to convince him that it's good to be in business. See, Lord, if I'm a businessman, I will help you. Really? Mohammed, you'll help me? <laughs> I will take care of you. Really? I want you to obey. Amen. That's how you be different towards the Savior. You obey. If you love me, keep my commandments. I hear a lot of people say, I love Jesus, but I watch for love. <laughs> I love Jesus, but I take drugs. <coughs> I love Jesus, but I'm in gay marriage. How can you love Jesus and do this? That's right. It just doesn't make sense. Why not? Because Jesus said no to this. If you love me, my commandments. You have to be different towards the sin. Thirdly, we need to be different towards sinners. I'm not indifferent. Regardless of who are the sinners, we need to love them. Right. It doesn't matter whether they're Muslims, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever they are, we need to love them. Stop being afraid. We have two million and a half Syrian refugees in Lebanon. And you're afraid of 10,000. We are four million people and you are 380 million people. But they're coming here to do bad things and destroy. Really? What happened last week in Texas? Please tell me. They were not Muslims. This guy who stabbed people, he was not a Muslim. This guy who shot his girlfriend, he was not a Muslim. 
the woman who committed suicide with her daughter, she was not a Muslim. My friend, it's about sin, not Islam only. Islam is one face of sin. But it is about sin. And when we look at it, we see sin. We don't see anything else. Polygamy, and killing, and murdering. This is sin. It doesn't matter under which pretext it's done. It is sin. And we need to love the Muslims and hate Islam. Because Islam is the enemy. That's why. It goes against everything that God stands for. And what did God tell us about the enemy? Let's consider these people are the enemy. What did God tell us? How do we overcome our enemy? Do we carry guns and shoot them? How do we overcome them? By loving them. Jesus said, love your enemies. Love is the most powerful weapon and tool you can use to overcome enemies. It destroys everything. Nothing can stand against love. Nothing. It's like a nuclear bomb. Rome was the most atrocious empire ever to come to history. If you think ISIS are bad, oh, this is Kate's pretty. You should see Rome. You should see Rome. They put the believers on stakes and lit the city with them. They threw them to the beast and ripped them to pieces and they were laughing and having a party. They chained them in the galleries and put them in prisons underground for years. People died there. And yet this empire that is so wicked and so evil in 323 fell under the feet the love of Christ. That's how we conquer. And Islam is the same. The only way we're going to conquer Islam, contain Islam, is by loving those Muslims. By going to their land, by planting lighthouses there, by reaching to them, by loving them there. It's not going to happen here, and it's not going to happen with Tomahawk Cruise Missile. That's only going to agitate the situation. Because violence is a cycle. It never ends. What ends violence and hate is love. Even when you're married and you dicker with your wife, when she loves you, it ends up everything else. Or when you love her, it ends up everything else. If you go out, you're going to get in a fight. Somebody says, finish, I love you. I'm done. It's all. Love is a powerful tool. And we need to use it. We have stopped using it because we are indifferent. It's when we become different, we learn how to love. And finally, not just we should be different towards sinners, see them whenever they are, love on them, whether they come to you here to the States. I mean, I'm not with refugees coming in. I am with screening them and taking measures. But when they come in, I am with you loving them. He's done. And don't be afraid of them. They cannot do except what God wants them. Make no mistake. When they come here, love them, yeah. take care of them, meet them at the airport. If you don't meet them at the airport, the devil is going to come. That's good. And he's going to take them to his church. So you meet them, bring them to this church. Love them, care for them. Show them Jesus Christ. God sends them your way, whether they're Mexican or Syrians or Yemeni or Somali, so they can be heavenly citizens, not American citizens. That's the desire of God. That's why He brings them here. 
and you take advantage of it. This is an open door that God is placing in front of you to be used by Him to love them and bring them to the knowledge of the Savior. And they're weary and ready. They're done with Islam. They're asking questions. I meet many of them on Facebook in everyday life. They're tired. They're asking questions. What is happening? They need answers. They need the alternative. And we have the alternative to give them. Yeah. Like no other. We need to do that. Finally, we need to be different towards society. We are the soul of the earth. We are it. We make a difference everywhere we go. I mean, look how powerful is the impact of Christianity on history. So think, think with me about the top universities in the nation. What were they? Buddhist? What were they? Who founded them? Top hospitals in the nation? Top schools in the nation? Advancement in technology? Christ! They ask me, why is the West better than us? I tell them, the reason is there is Christ there. He makes a difference. There are Christians there. There are churches there. You are the safety of America. The safety of this nation is not in the White House. Right. Not in the SEALs or the aircraft carriers. No. The safety of America is in the righteous. When the righteous sees, make no mistake, God will judge America. Yeah. Right. Make no mistake. He has no favorites. And so you are the safety. You are the safety valve. You need to go out and fill those pews. You need to engage more and more in the Great Commission. More and more. Those walls outside, they need to all of them be filled. This is it. This is the story of our life. It's the Great Commission. It's taking the gospel out. That's why we're here. We don't want to be here except to preach the gospel. Other than that, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to live here for one minute. What a life. It's full of sin and wickedness and evil and sick things. I want to be with my Lord. The reason I am here is to preach the gospel. And I've been trying to go home and God is always saying, not now. And we should all desire to go home. Wasn't this the desire of Paul? He says, I have a desire to go. Paul, I don't understand you. You have a desire to die? Yes. Because to die is gain. That's why. And John says, come Lord. What are you talking about? You want him to come now? I'm building my own mansion. Wow. I'm going on a cruise to Hawaii. You want him to come now? Yes. Because heaven is better than Hawaii. Yeah. That's why. We need to impact society in whichever capacity God places us. Right. If you're a lawyer, impact society Amen. as a lawyer, as a Christian lawyer. If you're a businessman, impact society as a businessman. Right. If you're a doctor, impact society as a doctor. Be the salt of the area God places you in. Right. If you're a policeman, impact society as a policer. Show them how Christ would do it. Because they don't know. The melody of indifference and the magnitude of difference. Are you sick? Do you have this disease of being indifferent? You just concentrate your eyes on yourself all the time. Don't you want to live in this world and make a difference? Change things? Impact the world? Impact the city of time? Impact Lebanon? Impact the Middle East? 
impact Garland, impact Richardson, impact Dallas? Don't you want to do, don't you have a desire to do that? The zeal of the Lord is not eating you up. I want to see my God glorified, lifted up. That's it. The melody of the universe. Refuse it. Let the Lord heal you from it. And rise to the magnitude of difference, of making a difference. Say, I want to make a difference. <laughs> Wherever I go, wherever God places me, whatever God gives me, I want to make a difference. Wherever I go, wherever I go. Because that's why God placed you. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Right? Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? And that's why we're losing our edge. We're getting nowhere anymore. Because we, we're losing our saltiness. We're not salty anymore. We need to go back and be salty. Make a difference in the taste. When people look at us, they need to see Jesus. They need to see something different of us. Not the same as the world. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord and Father, we thank you, Lord, because you call on us to be the salt of the world. Help us, Lord, to make a difference in this world. Oh, Lord, clean us and heal us from the malady of indifference, Lord. And may we seek to impact the world you put us in, Lord, to make a difference, to change lives, to impact lives. We thank you for the word and it's clarity of us